Hello everyone, this is Jair and in this video I will demonstrate how to install Umbrel in Linux and Linux Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, this video is going to be a series of different uh, steps demonstrating this installation because it requires a lot of steps and also it took me a while to set up this because I needed to set up a new hardware, uh, a new laptop and also a new uh, hard drive, external hard drive. So as you can see here, uh, I have the list of the steps that we'll be going through. So first I will explain quickly the installation of uh, the, the, the hardware that I have that I need to put together to set up this, 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 this environment. And I will also show you the type of hard drive that I'm using. E, and, and also I will show the permanent configuration of the hard drive, which this, this hard drive needs to be set up in a way that when you reboot your PC, Umbrel will automatically recognize where the hard drive is. And then if you unplug and plug it again, and reboot the machine has to be uh, recognized in order to work for Umbrel. And also, this is a configuration that you do in, in Linux itself. Uh, I will also show really quick how what software we use to create the uh, what what software is needed to set up the Ubuntu in in a laptop or in a desktop, and also the software that we use to flash the drive. Uh, the Ubuntu ISO that you will need to download, the software that you will need to use to flash this drive. Um, the Ubuntu installation is, is not going to be the it's not going to be demonstrated in this video because it's going to be too long. So what I will do is I will refer to a link that has the installation of Ubuntu very well in another YouTuber uh, that I can I, I saw the installation and I can recommend it. And then uh, I will do myself the installation of Docker and the installation of Docker Compose here. Once we complete those requirements, um, I will also be adding uh, the Umbrel installation, but before that, I will actually add here Umbrel installation plus requirements. because there, is, uh, there are some requirements before installing just uh, besides Docker installation and Docker Compose. Um, I will keep this series of videos uh, not too long, about 10 minutes each. So uh, that's why I will be dividing in different parts. These uh, videos are going to be in English, but I will be also creating a version in Spanish. Uh, and then after we complete the Umbrel installation requirements, I will install Umbrel and we will go through the initial setup. Alright, so let's start with uh, describing the hardware that I have. So to put, uh, to put this environment together, I will be using uh, Dell XPS 13. This is a laptop I will be using, it's an old laptop, a spare that I was able to, to to borrow to use for this uh, setup and uh, if you want to see the specifications here is the URL and you can go there and you can see more details about the, the laptop but in, in short in summary it's a very lightweight laptop and it has uh, uh, in, in case of what you want to see what the laptop has this is the details this is the actually the laptop uh, I have 8 gigabytes of RAM uh, it's an Intel Core i7, uh, old generation. Uh, it's using an internal SSD drive for the system, for the Linux system. This is now where I'm going to be installing uh, the uh, Umbrel or the blockchain of Bitcoin. It's not going to be installed here. This is the operating system that I'm I will be using, Ubuntu 20.04.3 LTS, long-term support. 64-bit, uh, of course, and um, I also have the external hard drive details here. It's a it's a three terabytes hard drive. It's Hitachi hard drive. This one here, 
and this hard drive is right now is empty and only has one directory. I will explain later why I use this directory, but uh, this is where the Bitcoin and Umbrel and all the system will be installed. And uh, the hard drive is a pretty old hard drive as well, so it's a hard drive disk. It's not a SSD external drive. So this this is interesting to see how long it's going to take to for the blockchain to synchronize. So here, as you can see, this is using a USB port, uh, and it connects via USB 2.0. This this one here, this description, is using USB 3.0 but it's because it's the newer version. The version I have is the oldest version, so I couldn't find a real good picture, but it's the same physical drive like this, very thick and very big, and it uses a power uh, connector here. And uh, uh, so next, uh, let's, uh, that's, that's exactly what I show you. So let's go ahead and set up the permanent configuration of the external drive. Um, what we need to do here is there is a file you know, in, in Linux, it's called itc.fstab and in this file is where Linux maintains the mapping of the different drives that they are connected. One of, them, one of the drives here is SDA1 and SDA1 is the local drive of this machine. So. To make it very simple, I will just explain how to mount the drive. And uh, basically we need to edit this drive and add some details that I have also here uh, on this URL. It explains how to do that as a root. So it's very, very simple. So we just need to edit the file and add these, these details. In this case, the mounting, the name here, I would change it to something like uh, Bitcoin because I like to call it Bitcoin so I know that's the, the directory where we're going to map the external drive. This is to make it permanent, so when we reboot the machine, the hard drive is still connected and, the, and then Umbrel continue works, working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sudo nano. This is a very simple editor in Linux. And then here I will do um, etsy and then fstab. And then I need to put my administration, administrator password. Uh, so what I will do here is I will add in the at the end of this uh, drive, uh, at the end of this uh, line, as in the instructions here shows, at the, at the end of the at the end of the file, so I will do, I will go at the end of this and then a presenter, and I will add a comment just to say, uh, second hard drive disk for Bitcoin data Bitcoin block chain data okay this is where the bl 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 blockchain Bitcoin data will be installed so I will add the forward slash dev sdb1 and what we do here we, we press tab and we add another forward slash and we'll add the name of the hard drive uh, the name of the mounting uh, directory is going to be bitcoin I will add it in capital bitcoin and then I press another tab and we follow the instructions here. Uh, in this case, I will format this hard drive as a EXT, e XFS file system. I will change this and I will demonstrate that how, how it's done. So I will just add XFS and then another tab and we will add defaults tab zero tab zero. OK, 
Okay, so we do defaults and then press tab zero and then press tab zero. This these details are not related to the to the video and are very very technical. So this will require additional explanation and is an advanced topic. So I would not go through that as the video would be way too long. So once this is completed, we can, as we, as you can see here, it say to write the, the changes, do press the control and the letter O. So the, so I will do that. I will press enter here. And then I will, with the control key and then the letter O, it will ask me, do you want to write these changes? Do you want to write these changes here? I will say yes and I will press enter. As you can see, it tells us that it wrote some, some changes here. And then to exit, we do we press the control key and X, and X, and X uh, key. So I will do control and the letter X. So now we're out of the file. And if I do a cat command to check again what is in the file fstat, we can see that now we have a new a new line added here. This 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 is this part is completed. So now we can verify that if we do the ls blk command, we can see that we have a partition called Bitcoin and it's mounted into the secondary hard drive. Once this part is done, we can move forward with the next step of uh, looking for a USB flash drive. So this USB flash drive uh, will we'll start on the step three on the next video. Thank you for watching.